Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about my Jet Shaper table and how I improved it in my workshop. I'm constantly learning from mistakes and when things go wrong. So as a lifelong learner, uh, this video is going to show you what I did to upgrade and make it safer. So here in my workshop, I primarily use that Jet Shaper to mill up frame and panel or cope and stick uh, panels, sometimes wainscoting panels. And when I, when I do this, I want to be precise and I use sliding sleds that index into the miter slot. And recently I've encountered some quality issues when milling long stock. For example, you know, an end panel of a, of a tall bookcase or maybe a long horizontal panel, wainscoting panel on a bench seat. And there are two situational problems that I, I was in, encountering I needed to improve on. The first was I had like a 36 inch sliding sled. Um, and that was for my longer materials. And the problem with the 36 inch sled is it's too long for my short little, I don't know, 16, 18 inch table. Um, and when you slide it back to start stuff, the weight of the table can lift, it can tilt, and it lifts up the front end, and when you push it into the shaper, you gouge your material. The second was, uh, I could clamp a fixed fence and try to push material through. Again, table was too short. If it was long, it could flop or flat, uh, chatter. Um, and there's really no way to uh, support it where it was overhanging the shaper table. Again, quality issues. So when routing these longer boards, I would typically um, get gouges or I imperfections. And I also had to clamp it down to the table and physically push it through the shaper. So that's not safe. You know, I'd rather have clamps and slide it through. So I started thinking I need a longer table, right? I needed three things to improve for quality and safety. I needed a, um, a longer table. I needed a better sliding sled, probably longer. And I needed a, a much longer sliding sled for longer parts and I wanted it all adjustable. So I started thinking about the tabletop first and did some research online. I couldn't find anything for my Jet Shaper. There's nothing I could buy. They had a couple little metal extension wings, not long enough. So I decided I'm gonna make it, like, we, like most of us do, right? Um, also, I had been using a fixed fence with screws and moving the fence. Every time I needed to adjust it, I had to move the screws with a, a driver and screws, and that took up time. And I wanted to improve setup time, accuracy, and efficiency there as well. When I, um, when I need something, I, I, I have a workshop jig or I want to address an efficiency pain point in my workshop, I always go to Rockler. I've learned that there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Somebody's already thought about a jig, most likely at Rockler. And they do a nice job with their jigs, accessories, and, and fixtures. While looking on the Rockler's website for ideas, I came across this uh, folding uh, top extension kit. It's called Rock Rockler Rocksteady Cable Extension Kit. Reminded me of an old extension uh, outfeed table that I bought from years ago for my old Grizzly table saw, but this one was way better design. So I picked up two pair of those, some T-tracks and clamps, and I jumped in. I built a pair of three-quarter inch shaper extension wings that basically would lower and store in a downward position and attach to a three-quarter top. When it fully extended and the legs were out, it would be 93 inches long. The tabletop and wings would all be connected and would be secured to the, uh, the shaper table, the metal table, with a miter slot keyway to lock it into the table, wood cleats underneath around the perimeter, and two toggle clamps to hold it down. Uh, I added a, a dado slot all the way down the whole length of the long table to allow me to um, use sliding sleds. I wanted to keep that idea. I also added four perpendicular T-tracks to use a fixed fence or give me some options if I was using it for something else. Um, uh, okay, um, for my two folding extension tables or wings, I did settle on the Rocksteady folding extension kit and that's comprised of a pair, it comes to, in a, to a pair of these um, hinged brackets and folding legs. And this, it, they're kind of cool and here's what I like about them. The legs open by depressing this big large paddle lever and then they lock open but when you close them, they lock closed. So um, they also ad uh, offer adjustment heights from 22 and 5 eighths, I think to seven and 5 eighths in one inch increments. And the legs have a swivel pivot uh, foot that screws to adjust up to like a half inch of, of fine tuning. Now in the past, when I was building these kind of things, um, I would use oak or mahogany for my miter slot runners. So I, about a year ago, I, I found, I came across Rockler's plastic jig stock and their aluminum miter um, slot stock. So I want to talk about that because I use that on this project as well. Uh, they have a UHMW plastic jig stock. It's four inches by 24 by three quarters thick. And UHMW stands for ultra high molecular weight polyethylene polymer. 
and it's basically it's just a great material to use for making jigs and fixtures. It has a low coefficient of friction and it's self lubricating which makes a great choice for a miter slot slide. Now to be clear, um, my table indexed into the, the shaper table, it doesn't slide. It just locks in as an indexing point or a keyway. Um, the UHMW costs about 50 bucks and I can make about a half dozen runners just from one piece. Rockler also sells a 24 inch and I think 36 inch aluminum uh, bar stock that is designed specifically for miter slots. The aluminum stock, um, it's about $26 ish and it's not going to warp swell like wood does and it also has quarter 20 threaded holes so you can attach to your jigs and stuff. I ended up using the aluminum miter stock on my long, long sled, uh, like the 76 inch long sled. Um, and those threaded holes just make for a really easy installation. I, um, I wanted to improve my fence system and eliminate, like I mentioned this earlier, I want to eliminate the bunch of screws and having to use a driver to adjust the fence. So, um, cause you know, you do different thickness styles and rails and stuff. So adding a sliding clamping system would eliminate the screws and allow me just to quickly, you know, make those adjustments and micro adjustments. So to achieve that, I added uh, Rockler T-Tracks and auto adjusting clamps. Now, if you haven't seen Rockler T-Tracks, you're missing out. I use them everywhere in my shop. Um, it's extruded aluminum, um, they're blue. I use them for, I use them for shop jigs, uh, my miter saw stops, tabletop, my assembly tabletop hold downs, and even my router fence adjustment. Um, so if you're not familiar with the T-Track, it, it basically accepts a 5 16 or quarter inch T-bolt as well as a quarter inch hex bolt. And they come in two, three, and four foot lengths. So you have to kind of work with those lengths. They're pre-drilled holes, but you can drill more if you need them. And the, drill, the holes are uh, four inches on center and two inches in from the ends. It measures three quarters wide by three eighths inches deep. And I use a three quarter um, dado bit. I route them out, and clean the edges with a chisel and, and go for it. Uh, to fasten them into my sleds and tables, I use number six flathead screws that you have to buy yourself. Um, for the clamps, I went with the Rockler Autolock T-Track hold down clamp, which um, basically could clamp anything as thin as a veneer sheet all the way up to two and three quarter thick. Uh, there is a set screw for adjusting the clamping pressure. And this is kind of cool. You can go from five pounds to 250 pounds of pressure and it stays consistent regardless of the thickness of the workpiece. The clamp has a blue knurled knob that um, pretty much lets you slide and lock it into the T-Track. And the clamp itself has a reach of an inch and a half um, at its closest to three and a half out from the center of the track and two and, a, two and three quarters inches high. So when assembling this extension table, I decided mid-project that I would include and rebuild my sliding hold down sleds, right? So it made sense because I, I now have these extension wings and I could eliminate the sled from hanging over and tilting. So why not just make longer sleds? I could get away with it. So um, I, I told you I routed that long length um, on my extension table for that um, miter slot and I built two different fences. Uh, I ended up making um, a 36 inch sled, which is most parts that I use, and then a 76 inch to replace for that really long um, sled that I was having problems with. And I used the aluminum miter slots for that longer sled. While I was at it, I, I had the bug. <laughs> Actually, I had to. I, I made a new coping sled for the, for the end cuts. Um, I wasn't going to at first, but I decided that um, I didn't want to have to take the extension table off to put that sled on because the old sled I had was designed to slide in the metal slot on the, miter, on the, on the shaper table. So I wanted everything to stay put when it's set up and leveled and, and good to go. Um, the top of the sled, of my sliding sleds has four T-tracks on it and, and that's for a fence clamping system. And, and that's gonna allow me not to have to use screws. So um, I basically made a four inch long fence for it and it mounts to that uh, table, the, the sliding sled with T-nuts uh, and um, knobs. And then it has a long T-track in it. And from there, I can add as many clamps as I want. I can slide them and place them anywhere I want depending on the length of my of my stock. So I thought that gives me the knob, uh, the T-nuts and the knobs allow me to slide forward to the shaper and make that adjustment. And then the clamps slide left and right, which is just a great design, no screws, uh, fast and easy. 
Um, I, I should probably mention when I'm stalling my T-Track, you, you don't always, you have to cut it sometimes. So I, you can cut it with a carbide blade and put a piece of wood over it, but I just use a non-ferrous uh, miter saw blade, still put a piece of wood over it, and number six screws. Um, to finish off the sleds, I basically apply wax to the bottom of the sled jigs as well as the extension table wing. Um, the wax just helps seal the wood, but mostly it makes the sled just slides really nice, really sweet sliding. Um, the new Shaper extension wing works great. I've used it now a few times. Um, doing this project, guys, it gave me three immediate wins. The longer extension wings gave me just way better material support. The longer sliding sled with the Rockler clamps allow me to secure uh, clamps and readjust quickly and make micro adjustments on the fly without having to install screws. I can do different thicknesses of wood. Um, and three, I'm just achieving better quality results because things aren't tilting off the table anymore and getting gouged or, you know, lifting up and down and getting different thicknesses. Turned out to be a real time saver for me. Fun project to build and time is money, right? Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a, a real fun time doing it and uh, building the project. And I'm going to use this set of sleds and, and the extension table on dozens, probably hundreds of projects over the next couple of years. And I'll probably be tweaking it along the way like we always do, right? So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you didn't know about some of these things that Rockler sells, uh, it makes your life easier here in the shed. Uh, I'm Rob Robillard. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys. And please consider subscribing and click the notification bell right there. It'll let you guys know when I do another video. Uh, you don't miss it. Uh, you don't miss content, and it helps support the site. Take care.